What's up, Pagan people? Drew here, and this is going to probably be my only installment in the 2020 YouTube Pagan Challenge. For anyone who doesn't know, this year's Pagan Challenge was set up around the premise of making videos, discussing what we do in our lives and practices to be greener people and witches, um, how to be better custodians of the earth, that kind of thing. Earth-friendly, sort of environmentally conscious concepts, ideas, behaviors, what have you. Um, of course, just like every other pagan challenge, the idea is that you make a video a week on the topic. I personally knew that I could not do that. Um, I could break down each of the things I'm going to talk about into a separate video or maybe a different space in the home into different videos, but I still wasn't going to get a year's worth of videos out of it unless I talked about things that I don't actually do myself. I don't see anything wrong with that if other people want to discuss ways that they could improve or uh, ways that they're thinking of improving or suggestions for other people. That's wonderful, but I personally didn't want to do that. I, for the most part on my channel, want to talk about things that I have experience with and understand or practice myself. So that's also how I wanted to tackle this topic. Not that I never talk about things outside of my area of limited expertise, but I just genuinely felt like it didn't feel authentic. It felt a bit preachy for me to sit here and be like, well, you know, you could do this, this, and this when I don't do it myself. That's just me personally. So I'm only going to share with you the things that I do, thus one video. Oh, and a little disclaimer real quick. <laughs> uh, when I get into the bathroom section of this, I will be discussing menstrual issues. I'm not going to get into any kind of detail or specifics at all, but if that makes you at all, if you're at all queasy or uncomfortable with that kind of thing, then you may want to skip. Um, I'll give you a little warning or, you know, whatever, but <laughs> otherwise it should be fine. I think I want to start in the kitchen. And so I'm going to start before we even get to the kitchen. So first we have this. I'm sure you all recognize this kind of thing. It is a bag full of bags. Um, and they are grocery bags. I love these ones. Um, we started off just using ones that we had from other shops or whatever, but we actually ordered these specifically grocery bags off of Amazon. They have this nice little, I'm not even sure what material this is, honestly, but they have this nice little uh, cardboard bottom. So that's very helpful. They're very big. They hold a lot. They're so strong. The straps are sewed all the way from one side all the way down and there's no break it's one long thing and they're very sturdy i love these so much along with those we have these these are mesh produce bags and i do not live in a place where you can buy any of these kind of things i mean you can get bags at the shop uh, different shops like i've got other ones you know from we've had some from walmart and from books a million when books a million was a thing and home goods and michaels and marshalls and there's all kind of places that you can get these kind of bags but um i really wanted the ones i really enjoy using these ones that are specifically designed for grocery shopping they're great quality and we did start off using all those other miscellaneous bags and they're all different sizes and different um strengths as far as carrying you know a bag full of milk and juice and eggs and whatever i have two different sizes of these i cannot buy them where i live there's nowhere around here that sells them so again got them on amazon and the, i think our first set came with another thing i'm going to show later but we have two sets of them and some of the bags are large bags and you just hand wash them when they're you know starting to smell like onions or whatever you've been putting in them <laughs> Um, and let them air dry. Definitely an investment that was completely worth it and makes me feel good every time I go grocery shopping. I feel so much better about my shopping using reusable bags. So the other thing I was talking about that we got some of our one set of our produce bags with are these little silicone sandwich bags. Now you could probably see there's watermarks all inside here because I just let them air dry. So <laughs> Um, wash them by hand and let them air dry so they um, I don't dry them out I guess I should and then they wouldn't have the watermarks but I don't care I don't know but the little zipper top goes on now I will say this I really do I love these I really enjoy them they sit up nicely in the refrigerator with whatever in them liquid or whatever but they do not make an airtight seal I learned the hard way that you cannot put for instance saltines in these but you know if we get some pizza and there's some left over we, they come we have the larger sizes too um 
throw them in the bag they'll because it's only going to be in there for a day at the most um not a big deal so if it's something like the, a lot of times there are vegetables i can throw in because it doesn't matter if the air is getting to them i just need them contained in something I don't even zip it when it's that kind of thing. Like if I threw some broccoli or asparagus or something in here that was fresh and hadn't been cooked yet. Um, so I, I do love those and has greatly reduced our need for Ziploc bags, though my saltines still go in a Ziploc bag. You know, you do the best you can. Another kitchen item for storage is my beeswax wrap here. Um, I actually made all of these myself. I always have beeswax on hand. I work with it in my shop and in my personal practice. And I just knew that there was material that I loved at Walmart, actually. This, I love this material. You know, it says basil, bay, lavender, you know, all these little herbs, thyme, all over it. And so I bought like a yard and I just took like an A4 standard piece of paper and measured out my pieces for it, um, dipped them, you can find videos all over the internet about this, about on YouTube. Um, dip them in beeswax and let them dry. Um, and then, yeah, they work so good. I love these so much. They're antibacterial. They don't hold bacteria. You, um, you don't even really have to wash them with soap and water every time. Uh, I, I do occasionally. It just depends on what you want to do. But, um, yeah, you just wrap whatever it is uh, up in them. Rinse them when you're done. Um, the last thing I wrapped was I had made some wontons and I used half the pack. So I took a piece and wrapped it up and put it in the fridge. It just works so good. Uh, especially if they're, if they're being too stiff, you can just run a little bit of warm water over them, dry them off real quick. And then they're really pliable. And then after you stick them in the fridge, they harden up around whatever. So they hold it really secure. I just, I love beeswax wrap. Now, um, you can get it. You can buy it all over the internet as well. Um, and they're probably much more elegant and, you know, there's different sizes and what have you. Um, you can look up tutorials on all kinds of ways to fold them into pouches and all kinds of stuff. But I'm a DIY cheapskate kind of girl. <laughs> so I'm happy with mine. But you can find nice professionally made ones uh, online. So another thing in the kitchen as far as trying to be better more earth friendly is uh, reusing. So like this was kimchi, but now it's a coffee container. This was marinara sauce and now it holds uh, kidney beans, dried kidney beans. This was an, uh, another kind of pasta sauce and now it holds barley. So I'm always saving. I mean, I have tiny ones, I have big ones, whatever. Um, in my kitchen, my cabinets don't go up to the ceiling, so there's a gap there, and I just throw them, I'll wash them, and throw them on top of the cabinet, and then use them later for something else. And sometimes that's in my kitchen, sometimes that's in my studio uh, with witchy stuff, I put herbs in them or something, you know, whatever. Like, there's all kinds of uses for these kinds of things, and actually creative projects that I personally could get into um, when using them. Another thing we save is any kind of glass bottle with a plastic lid. I don't like the metal lids because they rust for this particular purpose. We'll save them and wash them and reuse them over and over again. And I'll make tea. So sometimes it's jasmine green tea. Sometimes it's sweet tea. Sometimes it's I'll make a, a royal tea. It's like a milk tea, a milk tea. And, you know, fill up 20 of these bottles, put them in the fridge. The family can go in and grab a drink. And especially during the summertime. Love that. The last thing that I can think of off the top of my head that we do in the kitchen is uh, compost. We have a Mr. Spin compost barrel in the backyard. And so, you know, probably every two weeks, depending, I will take what I've collected and take it out into the bin. Um, now, this would be like uh, potato peels, eggshells, banana peels, you know, the top, the ends of a carrot and celery and, you know, whatever. Whatever organic material is left over when I'm cooking that I don't need, I compost. So... <laughs> This is an old, like mushrooms were in here and I cleaned it out. And this is where we keep the eggshells and in the bottom drawer of our fridge. This was uh, grape tomatoes and I keep some vegetables in there. This was coconut oil and I keep vegetables in here. 
Um, this was cane sugar and we keep the coffee grounds in here. Um, of course, I know that all of this isn't an option for everyone. I'm just sharing what it is, again, that I do, um, that me and my family do. And um, I know that I personally will watch like zero waste channels and, you know, or, you know, low waste, reduced waste, what have you, and try to take what I can from them and incorporate it into my life. Now, I can't take everything. We all have different lifestyles. We all have different needs and priorities. And so I'm, but I'm always trying to kind of do better. So, you know, whatever. Don't, don't feel like I'm trying to say this is how to be a good pagan because that's not what I'm doing. Um, I'm just sharing what I do. And if you get something out of it, that's great. If not, that's okay too. Next, we're gonna move on to the bath. Well, I guess it's bathroom slash bedroom, but it's mostly bathroom. So, First off, I make my own toothpaste. This is my toothpaste. For the things I make, I'm not going to give a recipe just because there is a million and one recipes on the internet and we each have different needs and we each have different items at our disposal. I make everything from things I usually have on hand and according to what I need. So I've also found that experimentation is extremely important. It usually takes me about, in, I don't know, six months to a year to get a recipe that I'm like, yes, this is the one because I'm, I have to use up what I've already made. And then I'm like, that's not it. So try something else and blah, blah, blah. But I've been doing this for, I don't even know how many years. Honestly, mine has to do with the fact that I have very sensitive gums and this helps with that. I do supplement it. I do use a regular toothpaste I buy at the store. It's a charcoal toothpaste and I sort of switch back and forth between the two. Um, I, I feel okay about that. The toothpaste that I buy at the store probably has things in it that this does not, obviously, that are probably beneficial to dental care, right? <laughs> but this, this, this is a necessity for me. And I feel better about using less, it takes me longer to get through a tube of toothpaste than it would if I weren't using my own toothpaste that I make. Um, so, you know, I'm, in the end, I'm creating less plastic that way. Another product that I make myself is my body cream. Again, made with things I have on hand to suit me. It took me a long, took me a long time to find the recipe that I'm happy with. And I may change it again one day, but um, I'm very, I've been using this one for a couple years. I'm happy with it. I do use products that are bought in a store. I have I have, I don't know, a few, several, maybe like three or four Bath and Body Works lotions that I've had for years because it takes, it takes forever to get through them because I use this the majority of the time. I also have some oils that I use because I have hypothyroidism and I take a medication that the side effect for me, the only one, basically I get dry skin from it, right? So I need um, a hardcore moisturizer, oil-based. This is all oil-based, but then I also use some products that are purely oil sometimes. So I supplement a few things, but again, I can feel a little better about that personally because it takes me longer. I'm using less plastic. I'm creating less plastic waste in the long run. And typically, honestly, the, like the Bath and Body Works lotions, um, I'm not a perfume gal. So if I want to smell nice, I'm getting ready to go somewhere special or something. I don't know. I'll put on some of the lotion. Water-based creams don't work well. <laughs> they don't moisturize me enough. I'm hot. I'm taking this off. It's hot in here. The whole reason I started making products for myself was that I wanted to make a deodorant for myself years ago. I just, the waste, the waste involved with deodorant made me feel awful so much plastic and then most deodorants aren't great for you anyway so i made my own deodorant and i loved my deodorant so much but i had a severe reaction to it i think that it clogged my pores i think that's that's what happened with it it was made from things that i use in my lotion for example and in my toothpaste like i'm not allergic to anything that was in it but i just think it, being in that sensitive area and then maybe clogging my pores. I had a, it was like the worst heat rash ever in your armpits. It was awful. And I, and I did it twice because I wanted to make sure that, you know, and I, and I tried to be more diligent and do things diff a little differently. Um, you know, uh, just to give my, let my armpits have more time to air, to breathe. You know, it didn't, it didn't matter. Um, yeah, it was horrible. And it was so sad because I really did love that deodorant. So I started poking around watching, again, zero waste videos and whatever, and I came up with this. Now, I've only heard one negative thing about this personally. I mean, you could probably find stuff, but 
Um, and that is that there is a still a little aluminum in this. I don't know if that's true. Honestly, I haven't researched it because I love this and I'm using it. So, you know, when I'm done using it, maybe I will look into that before I buy again. But um, it is called crystal and it is basically salt. It's a yeah, it's a crystal um, and it comes with this little plastic cup that it can sit in and it comes in a plastic bag and cardboard. Now, the plastic bag is a really, really durable bag, definitely recyclable, um, but I keep them. Well, I kept it. This is my first one I've had. I'm going to reuse it for something else. Now, I have had this for, I want to say eight months, maybe, I think eight months. Um, I have not used it during the summer. This will be my first summer. It was fall, but fall where I live is really hot. <laughs> it can be hotter than summer. So I love this so much. The only complaint, and it's not even a complaint, but right after I shave, if I apply it immediately after, there's this tiny little sting sometimes. It's barely noticeable. I'm just like, oh, that's salt. <laughs> But it doesn't hurt and it doesn't happen every time and you don't have to apply right after you shave. So <laughs> um, I, I adore this. Okay, now disclaimer. I don't have strong body odor from any part of my body, really. I mean, I suppose if I didn't bathe or shower for an extended period of time, I might. But in general, I don't. Even if I go run around and get sweaty. I mean, yes, obviously there's going to be some kind of must or whatever, but like it's not it's not strong, like my feet, nothing. Um, not that there's nothing, it's just not strong. So, you know, take that into consideration with what I'm about to say. I don't stink ever with this. Like if, I, if I'm if i running around, I'm like, whoo. Um, and again, it'll be very mild, but I'll just be like, oh, I'm starting to stink. Let me, and I'll reapply. And, and I can smell myself again right out, it's gone. It neutralizes the odor immediately. It is not an antiperspirant, so it doesn't keep me from sweating, but it does keep me from stinking, you know, if I do sweat. I love this so much. No more white, no more white junk in my armpits of my shirt or my armpits themselves. You know, you just, you, yeah, your armpits need to be damp to apply. So, you know, put a little water uh, in your armpits and apply and you're good to go. And I apply twice a day that I always have with any kind of deodorant I use once in the morning and once in the evening. And then if I need to during the day for some reason, but I love this so much. <laughs> this is like my favorite change that I've made in my life. Cause yeah, when I, when my deodorant failed, I went back to using regular, you know, I used to use Dove using Dove deodorant and like, I just hated it. I hated every minute of it. <laughs> Another thing that drove me crazy with the waste was toothbrushes. That plastic just uh, made me feel terrible. How many toothbrushes are in landfills that are gonna be there forever? How many toothbrushes have I put in my lifetime? I'm 42 years old. I don't even wanna think about it. So I use bamboo toothbrushes. This is my current one and it has a little picture of a piggy on it. No, this one's a kitty. Well, you probably can't see it, but um, <laughs> this is the company that I get. It's probably backwards and I apologize. I don't know how to make it not do that. So it came with eight toothbrushes. These are the children's one, which is why there's animals on them. But <laughs> I don't have a huge mouth in the first place, but I still have my bottom two wisdom teeth. And adult American adult size toothbrushes don't fit back in my mouth properly. I can't brush my teeth properly. Um, Japanese adult toothbrushes work great but <laughs> not American. So um, I just I just get the children's size so that I can actually brush all my teeth fully. <laughs> but um, yeah, these are totally biodegradable. I have noticed that it's wood, right? So it'll hold moisture. So it gets a little uh, uh, minky, sounds gross, but it starts, you're like, wait, that, that that's weird. So I just, every couple weeks, every, I don't know. Yeah, every couple weeks, I will take uh, like Listerine, and disinfect it and it's fine because that was in the beginning when that were the first time i was like wait this is like wood holding moisture this is not a what what is this um i was like i'm not gonna be able to use these this is gross if this is it's just gonna get worse right um but i just was like well let me try this and it worked so i'm happy with that another thing in my bathroom are my makeup pads now you can just use a washcloth to remove your makeup i don't like that it's awkward and uncomfortable for me. It doesn't work. Although I have heard people say that using a baby's washcloth is better. It's softer. It's more gentle on your skin. They're also smaller so that and thinner. So that might work okay. 
but I just happen to really like around. Now you'll see mine are all stained. <laughs> and if I wanted to, I could probably bleach them, but I'm not really big into bleach. I keep it on hand for emergency situations, but I don't like to use it. I don't use it much. I don't bleach my clothes or anything like that. So I don't mind that it's stained. It still does its job. I just really like the this, this size and shape of this, especially for my eye area. I, I find washcloths so awkward. It, I, I just don't enjoy using a washcloth. So I have these. There are a little set of washable, reusable makeup removing pads. Another thing is shampoo and conditioner bars. Um, no plastic with those. And I just feel better about it. They last a long time. They work really well. Um, if you've never heard anything about it, then they do change the way your hair is because if you've just been using regular shampoo, there's a lot of chemicals in there. And so when you go to using this kind of thing, it drastically changes the way your hair is. And they'll recommend doing like a uh, apple cider vinegar rinse for a while with it or whatever. And um, you know, what have you. I personally, it's fine. I don't have a problem with it. My hair already, it, it's, it's, well, you can see it's really wavy, curly. So that has issues. Um, it can get quite frizzy and then I color treat it. So that adds to that and you know, whatever. So I'm okay with it. If my hair were longer, Maybe it would be different. I don't know. But, you know, I have heard that you typically need to experiment and um, find the bar that works for you, depending on what's in it. This is just the first ones that I've tried. I've had them again, probably six to eight months, even though they're <laughs> I don't want I only wash my hair like twice a week. So <laughs> there's that, too. But yeah, they, they, those are going to last me forever. And I think they were three dollars each. So that's even in comparison, like it just, they go a lot further. I also use a bar for shaving. This is not a special shave bar. It's not designed for that, but it is a coconut oil based bar, which is basically what you need. You need a coconut oil based bar because it'll keep the moisture in your skin and works lovely. And again, I've had this longer than those. So I don't know, but it was a good size bar of Coke. And it, again, like three bucks, way cheaper than shaving cream and much more friendly for the environment. I think that one just came with like a little cardboard sleeve around it. It wasn't even in a box or anything. Okay. And lastly for the bathroom part is the part that if anyone's squeamish, you might want to skip. <laughs> um, I use the Diva Cup. I'm not going to pretend that I am in love with it, but I wasn't in love with tampons either. So um, I don't really enjoy any of it, honestly. Uh, it works. I don't have a problem with it. I feel secure in myself when I'm running around wearing this. And um, yeah, uh, I will continue to use this until I go through the change. And then there are these. Um, these are pads and these are panty liners. They are washable and reusable. And um, if you've had kids, you'd probably be cool with this. If not, maybe not. I don't know. Um, I think that most women can handle their own mess though, right? They have little snaps you put them on. Um, when you're done, you soak them in cold water and then you're just supposed to wash them. I usually hand wash them before I wash them in the washer and in my washing and drying machine just because I feel better about that personally. I love these. I absolutely adore these. I will say they do not allow you to breathe the way a a disposable pad would, but that's all right. Um, and then these, these have all different patterns on them. They're so cute. Well, they both have all different patterns, but those are just gray and white and black. And these are just all kinds of crazy, but they're smaller, obviously for, you know, light days or whatever. The problem that I have with these little ones is that sometimes they migrate. There's no sticky, right? So they can move on their own. At least with the big ones, there's two snaps so you can make it tighter. <clears throat> that, that is not the case with these. So I don't know. I'm sure there's some tricks and tips I can look at on the internet and figure out how to, but I've not had a huge problem with it. It's not been a, you know, and, and since I'm aware of it, I'm able to manage it. So I don't know. That's my bathroom biz. Um, next is laundry room and there's not a lot there. Um, this is the detergent we are currently using. It is from... The Laundress New York is the name of the company. This is a non-toxic, biodegradable, and allergy-free detergent. The detergent itself is not bad for the environment. 
Now, obviously it comes in a plastic bottle, but it's recyclable. I mean, I don't know. There's only so much you can do. Uh, at least, I feel like at least the detergent itself, because any detergent I buy, I can buy some detergent in a box, I guess. You can do that. But that detergent isn't necessarily environmentally safe. So, and I don't know. These are decisions we each have to make, right? That was actually gifted to us. Uh, my mother-in-law is very supportive. She also cares a great deal about the environment and she knows that we do. So anytime she sees something that can assist us with trying to be more envir environmentally friendly, she'll send it our way. Um, she sent us some really nice lavender, environmentally friendly dish soap, um, which I actually use to clean the bathtubs rather than doing dishes, but I need dish soap for both those things. So <laughs> that's what gets rid of soap scum. The thing is, is that the things that she buys us, we would not be able to afford to buy ourselves on a regular basis. So it's nice. Um, another thing that we do are these wool balls. Um, instead of using dryer sheets for, you know, getting rid of static clean, we use these. And the nice thing about these is you can add essential oils to them if you want to, if you want to bring in a fragrance, uh, just like a dryer sheet would do much more environmentally sound and it works. They work. I like them. And the last area that we are going into is the studio. The studio is where we house our business, our witchy business. And it's also where I house the majority of my witchy stuff and much of my husband's stuff is in there too. So some of the things from the studio are like tins. Anytime we get these kind of little tins, like my son loves these, he gets them every Yule. I will save these because um, I can store herbs in them. I can, there's all kinds of things that I can do with these kinds of things. Like for instance, both of these tins house polymer clay tools, the smaller clay tools that I don't want to lose. Of course, these kind of tins make great um, travel altars as well. I have another one. It's a little smaller than this that my travel altar lives in. Earlier when I showed you the silicone bags that we use, the Ziploc, the zip bags, zip bags, um, they live in here. It was a Christmas cookie tin. So, you know, we're always saving that kind of thing and trying to repurpose it. As far as our business goes, we're kind of, I'm in this big transition with the business in general, but um, over the past year, we have been switching, changing our packaging. And I'm still in the process of that. It's still evolving, but the part of it that is in motion for sure is the part where we were trying to eliminate as much plastic as humanly possible. Some of our candles need to be stored in bags. They just do. And we were storing them in plastic bags because you can see the product through the plastic. But I just, I don't feel good about it. it I don't feel good about it. And since the majority of our business is online, I feel like we can get away with storing them in bags that are not see-through. So we have been switching over to these um, wax paper bags. <sighs> kind of a pain because like for instance these bags they don't come in this size they're actually they fill the whole thing and I have to cut them and make them to the size I need them to be <laughs> but whatever it works and I feel better about the product being in this kind of bag um the popcorn that we use is biodegradable it's water soluble you can actually eat them although you shouldn't eat many of them at once i think they're like corn corn based um and then we use this crinkle craft paper um, i do use bubble wrap when necessary and i do use plastic bags when necessary so for instance if i am shipping out an oil i will put that in a little ziploc baggie because it could leak and i don't want it to ruin the whole package so um Sometimes I feel like it's a necessary evil, though I, we do genuinely try to avoid it as much as possible. And then the new labels that we are using for our product are also water soluble. That's that's the direction we're trying to move in. We're just trying to leave as little mess behind as humanly possible when it comes to our lives and our business. I totally forgot to mention, and the sound is probably different on here because I don't have my mic on. I apologize. <laughs> All of the cleaning products that I clean my house with are environment environmentally friendly as well. I make the majority of what I use myself. I have a video where I talk about that witchy housework and I use a lot of vinegar and baking soda. The last few little things um, are not things that I'm going to show you. So, I mean, I could, but 
I just think it's easier just to tell you. So for instance, the majority of the plants that we plant in the yard, well, my first thought when it comes to plants are witchcraft. Can I use these in my magic? But I do really try to put plants in the yard that are bee friendly, that make bees happy. So even the rosemary and the thyme get flowers, which the bees like. We have wisteria. I just love wisteria, but the bees love it. We have lamb's ears. I don't use them in my magic, but bees love them. Our apple trees, um, all of our trees are flowering that we planted. And that was by design just because I'm trying to make a better environment, not only for myself and my family, but for any of the creatures in the area. And you know, we, we feed and water the birds. We do a lot of thrift shopping. So we get a lot of our items secondhand and that includes clothes. I try to get as much as I can secondhand, but I had decided that I was going to try to get the bulk of my clothing secondhand, but I don't live in an area where that's possible, honestly. I live around a bunch of old people. I live in a very nice, safe place, but it's a retirement community. You have a lot of military and a lot of elderly. And so th the clothing selection at the thrift shop is not great. So I do what I can there. And I am going to drive about an hour away to another city to try to, to do some thrift shopping in that city at some point. <laughs> but um, in general, clothing thrift shopping is not, is not a viable option for me for the most part. So I, I find that very unfortunate, but the, a great many of my items that are used in my witchcraft or to store herbs and all that good stuff comes from a thrift store. Um, all of my altar cloths come from the thrift store. They're scarves and you know, whatever, just, I try to, we try to thrift. Um, we donate any, all of our stuff to that same thrift store so that other people can get use out of it. And, you know, we try to get as much as we can secondhand to repurpose it and reuse it and give it a new home. We also recycle. So, you know, reduce, reuse, recycle. These, these are our rules, just like, you know, most people who care. And that's kind of where our head is. Um, as I said, I'm always trying to do better, but this is where I am right now. Hopefully, you know, in five years, I'm doing much better than I am now, but I feel good about being conscious and being aware at least and trying to shift priorities um, in a way that is productive and that is feasible, really. Um, it's practical to continue to grow and change and be a better daughter of the earth. I thought that since Earth Day had just gone by that I would go ahead and do the video because I had been planning all year to do it, but I just didn't know when I was going to do it. But it just seemed, it seemed appropriate since earlier this week, it was Earth Day. All right, I'm done talking about this. If you stuck around, thanks so much for listening. And until next time, much love and gratitude.